Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Monday, February 6th, 2018. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, maybe a little lulls. Today's show is titled, Florida Slave Inc. Slammed by U.S. Judge. And you can get show notes at isheadlines.com. You can also get the show notes page, uh, the link to the show notes page in both the Facebook description if you're watching on Facebook and in the YouTube description if you're watching on YouTube. On this show... Slave System Challenge, Wireless Motion Energy, Corsican Nightmare for France, Baltimore PD Thuggery, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. U.S. judge orders halt to Florida prison slave system. So it looks like a U.S. district judge has finally gotten around to take action against what appears to be a de facto slave enterprise being run by the Florida pen penitentiary system. And this story is in The Atlantic. The title of their version is The Slave Power Behind Florida's Felon Disenfranchisement. Florida's felon disenfranchisement scheme plainly has wearied U.S. District Judge Mark Walker on Thursday. He announced that the state system violates the Constitution. You think? That's, that's nice. See, my Constitution works every once in a while. And ordered the parties to... It doesn't really work. And ordered the parties to a lawsuit to... Or, uh, and ordered the parties to a lawsuit to propose a remedy by February 12th. That's just six days away. It's a slight misnomer. Uh, this is uh, uh, the reporter in the Atlantic writing here. It's a slight misnomer to say that Han v. Scott struck down the disenfranchisement scheme. Walker did not hold that felons or ex-felons have an automatic right to vote. That issue, he reasoned, is settled by a 1974 Supreme Court case, Richardson v. Ramirez, that held that the exclusion of felons from the vote has an affirmative sanction in two of the 14 amendments. Blah, blah, blah. Understand to begin with that among the 50 American states, Florida is the undisputed disenfranchisement champion. And why do I stay slave? Well, if, if you are going to be asked, you're not going to really ask, if you're going to be forced to pay taxes to contribute to this system, whether you want to or not. And you're not going to have the choice to be able to vote to affect what that system does. You are, in fact, a slave. And this doesn't even begin to touch on exactly how slaves are, are, are how prisoners are used in Florida for work release, for work, uh, prison works programs and, and various other things. So... It's nice to see that a judge has recognized that, that maybe that's kind of sucky. You know, no taxation without representation. I won't get into why even that's absurd, but I'll just leave that at that for now. Try, but try, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, because I just learned this word yesterday. Tribo electricity will give you wireless power from motion alone. So a wireless energy generator creates electric power with the motion around it, including waves from water or motion from hands. The technique is called triboelectricity and is being worked on by a team from the University of Clemson. So this story is from Science Daily. Wireless energy source generates electricity from simple motions such as waves and clapping hands. Researchers from Clemson's Nanomaterials Institute are one step closer to wirelessly powering the world using triboelectricity, a green energy source. In March 2017, a group of physicists 
invented, well, from from the CNI thing, invented the ultra simple triboelectric nano generator or Utang. Okay, I don't know how. Never mind. Uh, a small device <laughs> made simply. I don't know how you get. Oh, okay, okay, I can see how you get Utang there. There for a moment, my brain said, "You know what? I'm not going to give you the logic behind Utang." And then my brain, a little bit later, said, "Okay, here it is. It's a small device made simply of plastic and tape that generates electricity from motion and vibrations. When the two materials are brought together through clapping your hands or tapping your feet, for example, a voltage is generated that is detected by a wired external circuit." Electrical energy by way of the circuit is then stored in a capacitor or a battery until it is needed. And you can read more about this if you go to the show notes, which are linked in the description for both the Facebook version of this show and the YouTube version. France prepares for Corsican push for autonomy from Paris. Well, uh, this is iState.tv, so you know iState is about 7 billion states of I. So, hey, this is moving in the right direction. The French are trying to head off another potential regional secessionist movement on the order of what has been seen in Catalonia. The region in question is Corsica. The mood in Corsica is to have less interference in its affairs by Paris. Macron is going to Corsica for a two-day visit in an effort to nip the Corsican autonomy movement in the bud. This is from Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Macron heads to Corsica to avert French repeat of Catalonia. Emmanuel Macron doesn't want Corsica to turn into France's Catalonia. The French president Tuesday begins a two-day visit to the Mediterranean island where a recently elected local administration is making demands for greater autonomy. Ooh, ooh, that the national government... That the national government so far, okay, so far has indicated it can't accept. And uh, get to the quotes here from a Corsican, Corsican a pr former president of the Corsican Assembly, Camilo de Rocco Serra. Macron is a serious man and a believer in the state, and I don't see how he can or will satisfy their demands. It's not possible, and it wouldn't be beneficial. France is a unitary state, not a federation. Oh, the Corsican says, no, please, please don't lengthen our leash. Will hydroponics get organic farming classification from the USDA? So I'm going to, I'm going to, going to set this up by really trying to paint the reality of the situation that the coercive enterprise framework will try to avoid. One group of business owners under the umbrella of a business association is seeking to prevent another group of business owners from getting the same type of government protection from competition they now currently enjoy. Neither group of business owners seem to have much of an issue with the coercive enterprise actually having the authority to ter determine who gets special protections and benefits and who is left out in the cold. So what we're talking about here, folks, is whether hydroponics, aquaponics, and aeroponics will be deemed, quote, organic, unquote, by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Organic farmers want to keep these types of farmers out of the preferred classification, while the hydroponics, aquaponics, and aeroponics farmers, they want in. They want into the tent of protection. And the matter is being weighed by the USDA, which released new information updating its consideration process. Uh, and this is from Farm Futures. Organic Industry Debate Certification of Aeroponic Systems. On January 25, 2018, USDA's Agricultural Marketing Service released an, an update on the status of organic hydroponics, aquaponics, blah, blah. At its fall public meeting, the Nat National Organic Standards Board heard testimony about hydroponics, blah, blah, blah. Certification of hydroponics, blah, 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 operations is allowed under the USDA organic regulations and has been since, and has been since the Nor National Organic Program began. For these products to be labeled as organic, the operation must be certified by a USDA accredited certifying agent 
and maintain compliance with the USDA organic regs. And the NOSB recommended prohibiting aeroponic systems in organic production, and the USDA will consider this recommendation. And the Organic Farmers Association is raising concern with the USDA's recent statement that, quote, certification of hydroponic, aquaponic, and aeroponic operations is allowed under the USDA organic regulations and has been since the National Organic Program began. Baltimore cops claim fake overtime. Seems like every, every week I'm getting more and more information about Baltimore Police Department and it's becoming increasingly apparent that the Baltimore Police Department is nothing but a glorified drug gang and that might be a bit hyperbole but I don't know how far from the truth that statement actually is with more news emerging that not only do they steal drugs and sell them they also steal guns and sell them let's add to that list they also appear to be stealing even more tax dollars than usual, claiming overtime when they didn't actually work overtime. So the practice is so widespread that the department is now requiring minutes. fingerprint scans to assure cops are not claiming overtime when they didn't work the overtime. Yet, they're still going to send these guys out in the field armed with the power to make life or death decisions over people they have been given quote authority unquote to judge and this is in and i'm going to read here a little bit from gizmodo their title is all baltimore cops to be fingerprinted after widespread overtime abuse see the difference in how i write a story and how these folks write a story as a police corruption scandal rocks the city the baltimore police department will now mandate fingerprint scans for officers clocking in and out of shifts last year the department budgeted 16 million for overtime yet spent 44.9 million dollars see that's more than 16 so a lot more Testimony during the ongoing corruption trial revealed an informal overtime system wherein officers who brought in large hauls of guns or drugs were rewarded with off-the-books time off. Uh, so I'll go down to a quote from a former commander speaking to the Baltimore Sun who said, You would hear squads say, yeah, we got five guns last week, so we got five G days. Some districts were well known for it. Some supervisors were well known for it. And if you go to the show notes and you click through and you read the whole Gizmodo article, you will not see any fundamental questioning of the fact that they feel compelled to have to require these officers to use a fingerprint process to assure that the officers are not openly stealing quote taxpayer unquote dollars and yet they're sending them out to govern others yeah yeah no, no question of that no connection made within that coercive enterprise mindset iran calls on turkey to end afrin aggression so the triumvirate of turkey iran and russia is being strained by what I am calling, and I'm sticking with it, by the Turk Reich's invasion of Afrin, with Iran now making more statements protesting the continued aggression of the Turks against the people of Afrin. And this is from Reuters. So Iran urged Turkey on Monday to stop its military offensive in Syria, saying the operation in a northern Afrin region breached Syrian sovereignty and would increase tension in the war-damaged country. Turkey last month launched an air and ground campaign dubbed Operation Olive Branch. <laughs> I'd love that. You know, Olive Branch, you're offering peace. So this is, this is, this is double speak in action here, folks, which is part and parcel for the Turk right against the Kurdish YPG militia in Afric, Afrin. Now, militia kind of has a connotation deserved or not that I would not have chosen. I would just call them uh, re resistance, 
resistance fighters, or, or why don't we just call them freedom fighters? Turkey should stop its operation and respect Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman Bahram Kasami was quoted as saying by state news agency Erna. 3D printing enhances radiotherapy treatment of cancer. So 3D printing may help doctors focus on radiotherapy in more targeted ways. The research is being done in Russia. This is from 3D printing industry. So 3D printing is helping researchers in the fight against cancer around the world. Experiments are applying experiments are applying the technology to help plan fail-safe tumor removal removal and even to investigate new models of treatment such as targeted drug delivery. But at the Tomsk Cancer Research Institute of Tomsk Polytechnic University, Russia, a team has developed a new 3D printable material that helps to assess radiotherapy treatments. There's no need to explain that, it, well, I don't have to read that. Uh, the 3D printed models make a Tomsk Polytechnic, made at Tomsk Polytechnic, are called dosimetry phantoms. They are replica body parts used to assess which tissues will receive radiation. Five minutes. Cherpenikov. Cherpenikov, who is, well, it's Yuri Cherpenikov, who's a senior lecturer at, at Tomsk, explains, we have developed a polymer material which is identical in density to the tissues of the body and various additives allowing creative analogy, analogous analogs, I'm sorry, analogs of a variety of tissues, bones, muscles, fats, and others. Connecticut looking to ban bump stock guns, ghost guns, or bump stocks and ghost guns. So Connecticut legislators are looking, well, first off, I want to say this story, it's as much about the news item as it is, again, about the writer of the news item who, again, this is an example of somebody ostensibly writing straight news, but with uh, maybe not even necessarily a hidden agenda, but with an agenda that they cannot help but reflect even in a, quote, straight news story. Connecticut legislators are looking for a way to go after bump stocks and ghost guns, and as usual, they're using fear tactics to drum up support from people in the hope they will literally beg coercive enterprise, the coercive enterprise to take control of their lives and protect them from themselves. Now, the writer of the article that I've excerpted from Marquisha Ricks, you heard me, Marquisha, I'm calling you out by name, says of bump stocks that they give guns a machine gun-like capability. Now, for anyone who knows anything about bump stocks, which, uh, yeah, clearly this gun-grabbing agitprop agent of state media does not, you know that bump stocks hardly come close to converting your rifle to anything approaching a machine gun save for an increase in the fire rate, but an increase that produces a hard-to-manage tool. So the writer also is unaware of, of, of how easy it is to actually convert any semi-auto rifle into a rapid-fire tool using a piece of wood, string, rubber bands, or even your hands alone. And, of course, she adds the terror fear event of all terror fear events to help nudge her readers towards supporting greater control over their ability to equip themselves with tools of self-defense. And uh, this is from the New Haven Independent. So lawmakers uh, gathered to, uh, well, well, I'll get to this part. The co-chair and vice chair of the General Assembly's Judiciary Committee joined Mayor Tony Harp and members of the New Haven Legislative Delegation at the church, well, it doesn't matter where they met, uh, to uh, to announce legislation to change the definition of what is a gun in is it, what a gun is in its in its state. The goal is to ban bump stocks and so-called ghost guns. And you can go to the show notes and get more Two information minutes. here. And I, I want to get to our lulls here. I know we have a couple stories here we're not going to get to in this list. So Harvard brand bans. I'll do this one. Harvard bans men's group reclassifies women's groups as gender focused. Let's call this your lulls of the day. Defying all common sense and choosing instead to continue to pursue social engineering plan that cuts dramatically against basic human reality. Harvard 
is now banning all single-sex organizations, but with a catch. Female organizations will become gender-focused, while male organizations will face ongoing sanctions to force them out of existence. In other words, it appears that all female groups are fine, but all male groups are not fine. Some very stupid parents are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to send their kids to a school that has decided to put social engineering ahead of actually attempting to prepare your kid to prosper in the real world. And I can't wait to watch the law suits fought One minute. at Harvard, as it is now openly discriminating against males. Some of the headlines we missed, Instagram account showcases fights from one high school. And, well, we, we, we covered that story. And here are some more headlines that we didn't get to. Turkey threatens Greece for challenging Macedonia. China's challengers to the South China Seas emerging. SEC chairman to recommend regs against crypto. Seattle 30 seconds. threatens Facebook over obscure political ad laws. YouTube in the U.S. Senate crosshairs over fraudulent content. World's first 3D printed camper to be printed in Saskatoon. China in world first deployment of experimental electromagnetic rail super Ten seconds. A warship. New Hampshire, pro-gun legislation to be considered on House floor. Iran, mass-producing drones strapped with smart bombs. And finally, Maldives declares state of emergency arrests two Supreme Court judges and former president. And there you go. That's it. When you hear that, that, that deep, deep, you know, you know it's over. And that's where you hear this part. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com or check the show notes, which are linked in the description of both the Facebook uh, video post as well as the YouTube video post. And you'll find all the show notes and links to stories there for February 6th, 2018. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.